Hey guys, this is Paul, and this is another video update for Void Destroyer 2. So if you're new to the project, uh, you should, probably should watch another video. This one doesn't have any crazy space battles and explosions and things like that. Um, talks about it a little bit, about aspects of the game a little bit later in it. So at this point, you know, you as the player, you have a Corvette, you know, a large ship. You've done quite a lot of missions, you've traded, you've done bounty hunted, uh, you've, you've made a lot of good money, you have a little bit of a fleet, and you're ready to upgrade this Corvette into a frigate, you know, another milestone in the game. So you've done a bunch of missions for this faction, so you can actually just go ahead and you can just auto-dock because you're that valued with this faction you know you got your corvette in the docking bay you're ready to to buy that frigate that you've been looking at you go to the purchase screen you click on the hades the ship with the rotating beams you're ready to buy you got the cash and first off you notice that the add to fleet and the trade in buttons are gone you're kind of starting to panic now. Now you see this commission button, and you see that it's grayed out. Okay, so so what's going on? So uh, when you put your mouse over it, oh man, it slaps you down with this neat shipyard. So these are the changes um, in the new patch. These changes are designed to make larger ships more substantial, uh, more special, give the player more of a impact in the game world make the game world a little bit more real and make factions more unique and and basically what it what it does is is um, when there's a ship frigate or above it's not a guarantee that the base will be able to build it so in this particular case for this particular base it needs a shipyard to build this to build this ship for you right now it doesn't uh, this base doesn't so you can either hunt for another base or uh, you could wait till this base builds a shipyard. Um, those are your two options. Or you could give up. <laughs> or you could use uh, ship capturing. You could steal another ship to make your own. Or you could go to another faction that might have a shipyard. Or uh, you could capture a base and build a ship yourself. So there's quite a lot of different options for you still. Um, but one of the options is kind of tweaked. Just flat out buying it has been has been uh, slightly slightly changed. Um, and for this faction, you you can't flat out buy it. You need a shipyard. All right. So actually, normally the civilians do have a shipyard. Here it is. Here's their shipyard. It's repairing a pug. I altered that save. To demonstrate what happens when there is no shipyard so let's go ahead go let's go back to the meter and try that again oh it looks like we have a battle between some bounty hunters and some indie pirates but we don't care about that we want our frigate let's go ahead auto dock So now we want to buy our beautiful Hades, and now everything's all right. We can go ahead, we can commission this ship. So again, this is different. So this is commission. So normally, hopefully the player is very accustomed to seeing trade-in, add to fleet purchase. Um, and now the player sees commission. The player understands that something different is happening. Um, when we buy it, when we go ahead, when we commission this ship, Another different thing happens where we're still in our Corvette. You know, we didn't immediately get this frigate. Um, so hopefully these two things tell the player, hey, something's different, this ship is special. Um, but I could use a I could do a better job explaining um, explaining this to the player. Hopefully there'll be, you know, obviously there'll be a manual sooner or later. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna undock. I'm gonna go ahead, travel on our way. We don't care about this fight that's happening there. We just want our frigate. 
going into the overworld mode. And we're going to put our mouse over the meter. And we see that now there's a commission ship Hades B. It's at 25%. Um, so the ship is being built. Of course, it's being built at a shipyard. The meter doesn't have a shipyard. The nearest shipyard is this guy over here. Let's go ahead and travel towards it. And pretty soon, our new frigate is going to travel to us. It's going to be built. It's going to pop up. It's going to travel to us and uh, form up with us. How's it going over there? 78%, 80%. So it doesn't take too long, but it's not an immediate gratification. It's something different. You know, it's a little more substantial. There's a requirement to it of a shipyard. Um, you know, it's a frigate. It's not just another Corvette. There it is. I'm going to tell it to join our main fleet. And in our main fleet, I'm going to tell it to be the main ship. There we are. We finally have our first frigate. Um, again, we could have potentially stole it, could have captured it. We could have gone to another base. Uh, we could have potentially captured a base and built it, but that would have been hard without a frigate. Um, so there's various options, uh, but this is the option we chose where civilians were lawful. Now we have our frigate. So now that we have it, Let's test it out. So normally you wouldn't do this, but let's go ahead. Let's get to the meter. Let's see what we have here. Who do we have close by? Got another Hades. Could pick a fight with. Civilian Hades. Should we test out our new beam frigate? I think we should. Let's tell our whoops. Let's tell our Anubis to fire on this ship. Let's get some range on it. And let's open fire. Let's pick a fight that we probably can't win. Because of how many, uh, because this is a civilian base. Because this is a civilian base, but let's kind of watch it a little bit. Let's see what happens if you immediately buy a, immediately buy a frigate and use it to immediately pick a fight. Probably not, not great stuff's going to happen. Well, we have an Anubis, so we actually have a little bit of advantage before the other ships get in range. There's our Anubis with our missiles. We're at 86%, they're at 30%, so we're going to win this fight, but we're going to lose the war when these other civilian ships decide they don't like us uh, killing, killing their buddies. Plus, we get a chance to look at the new... Uh, Def system, the new explosions from the previous patch. There we go. Bye bye, Hades. <laughs> there it is. All right, so update has a little bit of excitement in it, so I'm happy. So we just pissed off the civilians. We're now wanted. Um, bad news. We're going to get hunted down and killed like a dog. Um, so let's talk about some other things in the update. Alrighty, so uh, like I said, the civilians um, tend to build uh, shipyards. There's our shipyard. But not all factions will build shipyards. So if we look at actually at Demeter, if we hit details, this, this base Max internal ship build class is a Corvette. So we can build Corvettes without a problem. Frigates, it needs a shipyard, either external or internal. But not all bases are like this. Uh, the military, let's find the military base, Palm. The military 
can build up to frigates. So already uh, this little change um, makes factions a little bit more unique, uh, where the military is a little bit more powerful, can build up to frigates, civilians can build up to corvettes. Uh, the military also has shipyards. There it is. There's a military shipyard. And the military will also build shipyards in its local space. However, uh, other factions like the bounty hunters. Let's travel to the bounty hunters. Can only build a corvette and actually won't build a shipyard. So your choices for bounty hunters can we auto dock? Nope. We're not that we're not that high ranking with the bounty hunters. We have to manually dock. Bounty hunters also have some large ships here. Here's a uh, frigate. This is a medium frigate. They also have destroyers here. This is a medium destroyer. So actually, them not having shipyards, um, bounty hunters, I can't actually commission a Drake from them. So normally this would mean that uh, you can't ever get a frigate from the bounty hunters, and of course you guys would be quite upset at that because the Drake is a really cool bounty hunter ship. So what's going to happen is instead I changed it so that bounty hunters occasionally will, will sell these ships. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and dock with the shark. One of my favorite bases in the game. And let's see if we're lucky. Here we are at the shark purchase ship. So here need shipyard, right? So we actually can't buy the Drake. Even if we had the right mission rank, which we don't. We have zero. We've done no missions for these guys. Um, even if we had the right mission rank, we couldn't we couldn't commission this ever because they need a shipyard. Bounty hunters don't don't build a big shipyard. However, uh, what's going to happen is sometimes these ships will be available for sale. Now, whether they're available enough, I might have to tweak that. I might have to increase it, uh, depending on player feedback, things like that. But essentially, what it does is it makes factions more unique. So civilians build shipyards, that's their thing, they're going to do trading, they're going to sell ships. Bounty hunters are not concerned about making money through selling ships, they're more concerned about getting bounties, so they're not as concerned about, you know, building shipyards, things like that. They're, they're a different faction. It makes the game world more unique, more different, um, factions have a little bit more interest to it. Same thing happens with pirates. Uh, they don't build shipyards either, but they do have a few tricks up their sleeves um, as far as as far as those things are concerned. So that's about it on uh, commissioning commissioning ships. Uh, there's some other aspects to this. Let's go ahead and undock. The other aspect to this is if bounty hunters don't have shipyards, that means that. I can destroy these two destroyers, these frigates, and this base is much less defended. So capturing a bounty hunter base is going to be much different than capturing a civilian base. You know, the tactics could be different because I could slowly build them down. And they're not actually going to rebuild their forces uh, as far as frigates and... Um, and destroyers uh, a little bit different here you know than civilians civilians will rebuild their forces using their shipyards the military will also do that but the bounty hunters won't uh, so so again more unique now speaking of the military and civilians if I destroy their shipyards I can then you know influence what ships they have as base defense so in a drawn-out war in a big war, I can hurt their production capability of large ships. I can cripple them. Uh, so again, 
shipyards making big ships uh, more unique frigates and up um, makes the game more interesting I think you know gives you more tactics to the player uh, more type of different options slows down the rate of getting frigates uh, which means frigates are more important allows you to cripple other 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 factions other bases uh, makes other factions more unique like the bounty hunters and pirates compared to the civilians and military and things like that now the cool thing is is that when you own your base you can build a shipyard uh, and then you can you know mass produce frigates right so that's another benefit of owning a base that's another milestone you know you here you are you don't own the base yet you have to either capture frigates or or commission them but then bam you know you capture your first base you own your first base you build your shipyard and then you don't have this this thing around your neck anymore you know you have this sort of freedom so it's another cool stepping stone you know another like oh yeah this is awesome type moment you know first you have that fighter you get a gunship you feel so much more powerful you're like oh yeah then you get a corvette you feel great you know then you got a little work a little bit harder for a frigate now you know and then you get a base and all these things are opened up to you so i hope this this greatly enhances the game world hope this enhances your enjoyment of the game Alrighty, so as we're making frigates more substantial, slower, getting the rate of them slower, uh, this is traveling towards the path of unit caps. So here's what players do. Here's what I've observed players doing. This is actually a save file from a player. This player has, um, this is actually a slightly modified save file from a player. But this player has um one two three four five six seven seven hercules and they're traveling between solace and fob gamma is a lucrative run because it's a nice loop and it's very short so this this player set up this 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 route um this is what players do they 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 have all these hercules's hercules uh Transport ships. This one is carrying eight energy pods to sell to FOB Gamma, which is a military base. And it's going to yield a uh, 9,000 credit profit times eight. What's well, nine times eight? 70 something. <laughs> 72. This is going to lead a uh, 70,000 profit for a pretty short run. And then it's going to come back with weapons and sell to Solace. Uh, at an even probably even greater greater profit. So this is what players tend to do. So um, because it's it's sort of an easy way of getting money. So what I want to do is I want to slow down this rate. I don't want to like take it away. I don't want to eliminate it. I just want to slow it down. So I want to slow down the rate of uh, of the game in a sense. You know, once you get your first trading ship. It sort of really, really accelerates, and then players tend to just like spam trading ships. They ignore every other ship for just for trading ships. That's the best way to make money, uh, in, in a sense. It's the most automated. Um, it's the safest, and players tend to choose these sort of optimal methods. I do this too, as as a gamer, as a player in games I play. I do this too, so I understand this. However, in my game, I don't want there to be such a best way. That it just overshadows everything else, and such and and if there is a best way, I want it to be the most fun way, the most engaging way. So, automated trading ships are not that. Um, so this is really really hard to 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 sort of tweak because trading always tends to be pretty lucrative, you know. And I don't want to eliminate it. I don't want the game to be a grind. I don't want it to be a slog. I want you to make good money via trading. Um, but at the same time, not quite as good money. So, so let's talk about this. So, I'm going to put in unit caps. So, I'm going to make it so you can have less trading ships initially, and then you slowly, as you most likely gain trading levels, uh, you can add more ships to your fleet via the normal way. You know, and before adding unit caps, what I wanted to do is I wanted to add a trade ships interface. So let's talk about that. So here we are. This is the trade ships interface. Here's a Hercules. 
we can select different transport ships. Um, let's talk about transport ships first. Right now, this transport ship is an auto trader. Auto trading means it's just going to go based on what cargo it has and how close it is to a base. Uh, it's going to choose that base to sell. When it docks at a base, it's going to choose what to buy based on what this base produces. Based on what it has, it's going to choose the nearest base to sell to. So this is sometimes pretty dynamic where it'll go from base to different base to different base and sometimes kind of static, like in this case where it just keeps finding the same route as being the best. Uh, so some players might intentionally fly their fleet over here to, to, to Solace, the energy producing base, and then um, in the hopes that it's just going to trade back and forth with the, the military base, FOB Gamma. So um, players of space sims, let's talk about this a little bit, tend to like the economy aspect. You know, it's kind of interesting, uh, the trading aspect. Now, now I didn't really intend Void Destroyer, Void Destroyer to be this huge economy trading game, and it, and it really isn't. Um, however, players keep asking for this sort of more control over their, their transport ships, over their mining ships without it being so automated, whilst it, without them being able to control it. So I've listened to that, and seeing as I'm going to sort of take away your ships via the unit cap, I'm going to slow the rate down. I figured before I do that, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to take something away. I'm going to slow something down, but I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you a tool to manage your trading ships. So here's the trading ships interface. So the idea here is of trading loops. And uh, you can have five waypoints. I might rename these to routes or stops or delivery points or something. Waypoints might not be the best name for these. But you have five of them right now. I could add more. Um, it's just there's five resources, so I added five. Uh, we'll see if we need more. We'll, I'll kind of listen to you guys. Um, what you do is you say, hey, waypoint one, I want to sell energy. I want to sell it to FOB Gamma. Waypoint 2, I'm at FOB Gamma. I want to buy weapons. Waypoint 3, I want to go to Mining Base 1. I want to sell weapons. Waypoint 4, at Mining Base 1, I want to buy ore. That's what the Mining Base does. Waypoint 5, at I want to go back to FOB Gamma and sell ore. So this is a fully, uh, this is a nicely looped, let's check it. This should be Solace. So this is potentially a, uh, a trading loop, if I got everything right. You know, you go from waypoint one, you buy energy, you sell energy, I'm sorry, and then at FOB Gamma, you buy weapons, you take the weapons, you sell them at um, mining base, at the mining base you buy ore, and you sell that ore at FOB Gamma, and here we're back at FOB Gamma, you... Um, <laughs> okay, so we see the break in the loop. Let's clear all these waypoints. So actually, there's a buy and there's a sell here already. So we're going to say, hey, sell energy, buy weapons at FOB Gamma. FOB Gamma makes weapons, so buying them here is, is very lucrative. And it needs energy, so selling energy there is very lucrative. Then, from FOB Gamma, with weapons, go to Waypoint 2 and sell them at Mining Base. Sell them. Mining base, buy ore. Then at waypoint three, go to Sullis, let's say, sell the ore, buy energy. That's what Sullis produces, that's what Sullis uh, buys. And then at waypoint four, go to FOB Gamma. Actually, no, we don't have to worry about waypoint four because waypoint three is Solace. 
and waypoint 3 loops back to 1, FOB gamma, where we sell energy and buy weapons. So this is another uh, trading loop, right? So hopefully this makes sense. You can make these fairly complex, but each waypoint you can buy and sell something. So instead of having like waypoint 1 just buy, waypoint 2 just sell, you can use these um, both at the same time to make uh, trading loops. Hopefully I'm explaining this well. Some of you guys might, maybe I'm confusing some of you guys, maybe you guys can just figure this out on your own better than I'm explaining it. If you're sort of economy minded, you, you probably can create better loops than me. Um, hopefully this is enough tools for you to sort of get get the get the get the proper setup here. You also have these set to base preferences. So when you click this, you see that cell delivers food or weapons narcotics. This is what Solis buys. And it gets set to energy. This is what uh, Solis produces. Um, so that's another little help for you guys. You can also clear the waypoints. You can tell it to be an auto trader. Uh, you can tell it to be a waypoint trader now that you are. Let's set up these waypoints. So go to FOB Gamma, so energy, buy weapons. Go to Solace, buy energy, sell weapons. So this is the exact same loop as these ships are going to do, except using the waypoint, uh, waypoint trader. You can also set these ships to be mining support, at which point it's going to find a mining ship and carry cargo pods back and forth. Speaking of mining ships, let's select one. We're going to tell this mining ship to mine lost luggage and sell to FOB Gamma. Let's take a look at that. So now... We got our mining ship doing our thing. Where's my mining support ship? Mining support. So this ship is actually going to sell its cargo pods first because it already has nine energy pods. So after it sells it, it should it should it should go back to this um, to this mining ship here. This Pluto. Let's watch this Pluto. Actually, it's going to hit it against this, so it's kind of slowed down a little bit. Let's tell it to go to Three Sisters. Three Sisters. There we go. A little bit of a more direct route. It's going to go to Three Sisters. All right. So um, via this interface, you have a good amount of control over um, telling ships where to go, where to mine, where to deliver the ore before it was sort of kind of automated and you could sort of kind of get it to the point where they would do what you want them to do if you're lucky enough for this space and that field or this space and some other base to be to be close to each other close enough to each other but using this interface um, you can tell it hey which field to mine which uh, base to deliver it to you can set up waypoints you know uh, you can set up all kinds of trading loops, selling weapons here or here, energy here, supplying your bases, moving uh, resources around, uh, things like that. So, like I said, I'm going to be working on taking out aspects of uh, spamming ships too early. So I'm already working on that on the frigates. But I'm going to be working also on putting a cap. There's the support ship supporting this mining ship it's gonna it's gonna ferry um or back and forth between this mining ship um so like i said i'm going to be working on the unit caps pretty soon i'm going to start with uh economy ships where i'm going to say hey you can't spam in that that quickly you know you have sort of a cap and the cap raises uh via trading level when you capture a base that cap will also be raised and also, most likely, what I'll do is I'll let the player, uh, using the capture ships mechanic, override the unit cap, um, which I like. So you're saying, like, well, okay, so you're going to slap a unit cap on me to buy ships, but you're going to let me capture ships. That doesn't make sense. Well, to me, it does, because I'm okay with you being 
um, active, if you're making money in an active way via capturing ships or whatever, I'm okay with that. You know, that makes me happy. You're active, you're playing the game, you're not just idling. You know, if you're expanding your feet, fleet via capturing ships, I'm happy about that. I'm less happy if you're just sitting here and doing nothing. Um, all right, guys. I think this has been a pretty long update. Um, like I said, I'm going to be working on Unicaps next. Uh, I'm especially curious about your feedback to this uh, waypoint system, to this um, trade ships interface. Let me know your feedback, if it makes sense, if it doesn't. Um, hopefully, most of you guys will either understand it or just, hey, say, auto trader or mining support or whatever. Um, hopefully, I'll be making another video soon talking about unit caps. Um, those kinds of things. Hopefully the commission ship things make sense and, and you guys understand and enjoy it. So definitely uh, thank you for watching this update. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your comments, feedbacks, for your great reviews. Um, I hope to count on you guys' support much more as we keep going. It's actually been a year since early access. So I have to kind of make a note of that. I have to talk about that a little bit, what the plan is for release and things like that. You know, when releases, what the roadmap is. I have to look at that. I have to get a lot more serious about those kinds of aspects, about releasing the game for various reasons, uh, including financial, you know. But as you know, if you've been around for a while, I don't, you know, I don't uh, rush the game just because of financial reasons I want to release it. In fact, I tend to be the opposite where I tend to keep adding more and more crazy features instead of really really focusing more on um, instead of focusing more instead of being really strict myself on features and sort of worry on feature creep I tend to be just kind of crazy and keep, keep adding all kinds of all kinds of features to the game, but either way, I have to get more strict myself to work uh, harder, be more focused, and things like that uh, to get closer and closer to release. Um, so again, guys, thank you so much for supporting the project. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Uh, without you guys, wouldn't be able to be here where I am. Uh, I just want this guy to get a little closer so we can end on a cool mining sequence. There we go. Mind that or our beautiful Pluto. Get those get those pods filled. Have that other ship ferry them uh, back to a base. Have a really cool economy. So I definitely want this to happen. Definitely want you guys to have this sort of trading aspect. Even though I didn't really originally intend the game to be such heavily on trading, but you asked for it. I hope I can accommodate you guys as much as possible. Um, because, you know, making the game for you guys, making the game I always wanted to make, but for you guys, now I'm super rambling. Gonna just cut it off. Thank you again, guys, and I'll talk to you later.